So, ladies and gentlemen, um, back to the beginning. Um, this is a pretty good point at which we could kind of bring the day to an end following what Chigo and, uh, and uh, Patrick have said about the Nigerian power sector. Today, our power sector clearly is a puzzle to all of us. And so, in my talk, I'll just take us through, first of all, some statistics. We'll talk about why the sector is the way it is. We'll talk about the consequences of why the sector is the way it is. And then we'll conclude with a few thoughts on um, perhaps one or two policy initiatives that could be uh, put in place by the, by, by the government. As we'll come to find, the government is the end all and the be all of the power sector. It's still everything in the power sector. So statistics. Chigo says on about 180 million people. I think we have about 185 million. But, you know, the truth is that we're somewhere with a high number of people. The thing, however, about these statistics is that publicly available to each of us today in Nigeria, we have just seven gigawatts. Seven gigawatts. And when I say publicly available, that's what is delivered to us over the wires that we see all over the place. Um, but contrast that with this very interesting statistic. You, me, all of us in Nigeria self-generate. I pass my neighbor, big power plants in hotels and in industries, 65 gigawatts approximately. All right? So we put together are nine times bigger than those discos. That's a very interesting number. And I'll tell you about it. But think about this. It means that we spend money on providing our own infrastructure that we really ought not to be spending. That is money that we could be saving. By all estimates, it's something like a trillion naira every year that we should be saving for the future of our children. And we're not saving it. It has implications, and we'll talk about that presently. Now, of the seven gigawatts that we have available, about four to five is traded, is sold. You know, don't forget, electricity is a commodity. It's actually a manufactured product. It's not something that you get free from the air, like oxygen, even though it's just as important as oxygen. And so when we trade it each day, about four to five gigawatts, four to 5,000 megawatts is traded on a daily basis at an average tariff that gives us something like 50 billion that should be circulating every month between the players in the electricity sector. However, and this is something that lies at the crux of the problems that we have today, less than 30% of that 50 billion actually goes to where it should go to, to the generating companies that produce electricity, to the transmission company that picks it up wholesale and delivers it to the discos, right? And to every other supplier in the industry. Less than 30% of that 50 billion is actually delivered to them. That means something. It means that the industry is technically insolvent. Okay? And if you cannot circulate money in the industry, which is like circulating blood within your own body, what happens? You die. This industry is dying. Now, why is this happening? Um, why are we insolvent in the, in, the, in, the, in the power business? Essentially, Patrick talked about it. non cost reflective tariffs. If you do not pay the price of producing a loaf of bread, very quickly bread will not be available. If you do not pay the price that a manufacturer, Cadbury for instance, um, expends in producing one can of Bonvita, Bonvita will go out of the market very quickly. The same thing applies to electricity. So there is an actual cost that goes into producing that one unit of electricity that we consume daily. And if it's not collected, if it's not charged, first of all, and it is not collected and moved to various players in the industry that make up that energy value chain, the industry will, all, will ultimately die. Another reason, second, I think there are two big reasons, but the other is just as important. We have an unbalanced energy value chain. Now, why do I say energy? Because in Nigeria... Gas is the key feedstock, is the, is the key raw material for producing electricity in Nigeria. So, like, remember Chigo said, the most important player in the business of producing electricity is the guy that supplies the fuel. Remember, he said that. And that's why gas and electricity together make up our energy value chain. And that value chain is unbalanced. Why is it unbalanced? Let's look at some symptoms. You've got a federal ministry of power, works and housing, that sees itself 
as an overlord. It is overbearing, but it is also blind, and it is confused. And we'll talk about that presently with the kind of policy measures that he throws out on a regular basis that really do not make much sense to the industry. That's the Federal Ministry of Power, Works, and Housing. You've got a regulator, NERC. Donald was asking about NERC. What is NERC? Well, NERC is the entity that is responsible for designing the market and putting out the rules that makes that market work. Just like, again, Chine do said very correctly, the CBN of the power sector. So NERC today, for various reasons, which we need not go into here today, has abdicated a lot of its responsibility. It's not out there dealing with its key responsibilities. Other people are taking off that responsibility on its behalf. And most important of all, NERC is not dealing with what is still a major element of this market that we are in, which is market design. Market design is about who are the players, what are their roles, and how do they work together. Because we are in a market that is still very young, how that market design, how that market is designed, and how that design progresses and evolves over time is critical. We're not, we're not yet mature, and therefore, that entity, NERC, should be doing that for us. MBET, the Nigerian Bulk Electricity Trading Trade, uh, Nigerian Bulk Electricity Trader. We haven't heard of it at all, I'm sure, most of us in the room, but it plays a major role in our lives. MBET is the entity that is supposed to enable, to guarantee payments to generating companies and therefore encourage them to come into the market. So you'll ask yourself, where are these generating companies? So far, we've had only one in the last three or four years. With all the others, we should be having quite a number of them come into the market every year, but for various reasons, we've got only one. MBET, because NERC, you know, I said earlier on that NERC has abdicated its responsibility. One of those key responsibilities is setting tariffs. NERC has abandoned our responsibility to MBET. So MBET is the de facto setter of tariffs in the industry today. That shouldn't be the case. Now, that makes MBET also overbearing. But, you know, one thing about power, when you have power, you must have responsibility. MBT doesn't take responsibility. It just simply takes that power to set tariffs. That's a problem. That gives us a market that is dysfunctional, a market today that is working at cross purposes with one another. You've got generators wanting one thing, TCN wanting another, the transmitting company, and then discos, the ones that we see and deal with, with our customer issues on a daily basis, not doing what they should be doing. And you've got the last piece in the market jigsaw puzzle, you and I, customers. What are we, right? We are actually irrational. Why are we irrational? Blame Patrick. Patrick said something. We want power, but we don't want to pay for it, right? So we actually steal power. I am pretty certain that in this room, most of us, perhaps even all of us, know at least one person that steals power, but we dare not report that person, right? We actually look away when power is being stolen. Well, I'll have some news for you. When that person steals power, you end up paying for it. You who are law-abiding, you who actually pay your tariffs, you end up paying for the cost of that power. So, let me digress a little bit. It's in your interest to go and tell someone in Portaco Disco, that guy is bypassing. Or that lady, for that matter. Although I'm sure the ladies here don't do that. It's the guys who always do these things. So, we are irrational. We are angry. Right? With our discos and we are customers. And together, we, create, we have this unbalanced energy market. What are the consequences? If you do not have an electricity industry that charges and collects the right tariff, it will never grow, no matter how much we need electricity. And if our electricity industry doesn't grow, our economy will not grow. When you hear the Bureau of Statistics, CBN, talking about growth, it's all almost entirely driven by what's happening in oil and gas. Right? And that's not the way our country should develop because oil and gas is a fungible, finite resource that will finish and go away one day. We don't even add value to it. We simply produce it and export it. But electricity is what adds value to our lives. It's what makes us who we are. It's what makes us, gives us the ability to release our energies to grow. Young people are in this room. You all have bubbling ideas. I have every belief, no doubt in my mind, that none of those ideas can work unless you have steady access to electricity. Whatever it is 
idea is all about. So for as long as you don't have enough of energy in the market, your economy will not grow. You will not grow. So that's one consequence. There's a massive contingent liability that the federal government must carry. Today, it's about $5 billion. It's pretending that that problem is not there, but it is there. It will never go away. And what is that? How, that, how does that liability arise? Well, discos do not collect their tariffs because the government that sets the tariff does not want to set the right tariff. And so the government, therefore, takes ultimate responsibility for that gap. All right? If you say I shouldn't charge the right tariff, then you also have to pay me that right tariff, but it's not happening. Okay? So you have that gap growing. So every time somebody puts in more energy into the market, the government has to pay more, but it's not paying. And that gap continues to expand. It has its own implications. You've got a clueless Federal Ministry of Power, Works, and Housing. There's policy paralysis in there. Nobody's thinking about this problem, nobody's looking at the big picture and saying, what policy precepts do we put in place to try and solve this thing? Because you know what? Your market is therefore unbalanced. Now, what can we do really to try and solve this problem? We can do two things. We can do two things, really, by and large. Um, first solution, can we get the federal government, all right, the Ministry of Power, Works and Housing, to just leave the market alone and stop trying to rig it. And when I say rig the market, it does things that, well, do not really help the market. I'll give you two quick examples. So the federal government, through the Ministry of Power, Works and Housing, said we should do something about a type of customer called the eligible customer. The eligible customer is the big customer, the guy that buys a lot of electricity at the same time. Um, industries, one megawatt uh, per day which is about 24 megawatt hours in a day. Those are big customers. And it said, let's try and take away those from the market and have individual generators serve them. It didn't work because those big customers are the providers of the cross-subsidy that makes us have our electricity. As long as we don't pay, we as individuals don't pay our cost-reflective tariff, someone else must pay. That someone else is the big customer who pays more than the average cost of electricity. But when you take that customer off the grid, off the market, it means that you and I will have to have our tariffs increased to make that disco, that Genco, TCN, recover its, its cost. And that's not happening, which takes us back to that big contingent liability that we talked about. You also have this nice thing about something called the Rural Electrification Agency going around the country and trying to bring electricity to markets and to schools. But ignoring the rural areas for which it was created in the first place. So you've got that policy paralysis that I talked about earlier that is creating a huge disincentive, a huge set of disincentives in the market. Second, but also a big multidimensional uh, solution to the problem is, look, the industry will not work unless you've got a set of policies that actually make sense. Our Power Sector Reform Act was passed in 2005. It builds on the power policy of 2001 that said we will review policy every decade. It's now 17 years since the Nigerian electric power policy came into effect. It has not been reviewed at all. It should have been reviewed twice already. So why don't we take a few months, have focus groups of our individual players in the market, and try to get them to think through their solution. The distribution companies will first have a focus group. Customers will have theirs. Academia, big users of power, um, educational institutions, Jenkos, TCN. We all sit down and look at our individual problems. And when we come up with solutions, those solutions feed into a bigger session in which we then begin to rub off each other and try and come up with a new set of policies that actually make sense. I think until that happens, what Chigo talked about, that power sector of the future that we can all begin to imagine already will really not happen because there are no policy principles, there are no modifications to our laws to enable that to happen. But I think that if we have that, then we'll begin to look at an industry that can actually deliver to us a number of things that are very, very desirable. First, get the government out of owning anything at all. Second, set up some system that enables us, like an independent system operator, 
That's a big word, but what it does is actually be divorced from the government and manage the movement of energy from one place to the other and the movement of money that follows in the opposite direction um, to that energy. We also look at how to set up MBET and take it out of the market completely because for those who think about it, an MBET is not really... Um, a bulk trader isn't an entity that should be in this industry. We should have our generating companies, our distribution company, and then in between, we the trade with each other without that third-party reference. But I think finally, if all this is going to have to work, remember um, Chinedu said, I used to work in the presidential task force on power. That was an entity that was set up specifically to restart the industry when it had been in paralysis for a while. If we go through the policy precepts that we talked about, we will then have to find some way in which you can have a body with a temporary life, not a permanent life like a ministry that sees itself as having to perpetuate forever and ever. You have a group of people, competent people, experts in their various fields, come together and try and get those policy precepts to work. I think if we do that, then we can begin to have very clearly ahead of us a path towards that reimagined energy future um, that we all desire and we can only be the basis on which our country will grow. Thank you very much for listening.